Foundation Year 2 doctor. Every night, after her shift, she gets in the car to drive home. Martin was in her year at medical school. He came first in all his exams. Rachel has been a doctor for three years now. Her friends would describe her as outgoing, bubbly, happy-go-lucky. Lady has started her specialty training and has recently been able to take some time off. I came straight from school. I had a gap year. I have a degree already. I had to retake my A-levels. So then why do you want to be a doctor? I believe a career in medicine is a perfect choice for me. I have an interest in science. And I'm fascinated by the way the human body works. However, I also enjoy helping people. Medicine is a very career where you get to meet fascinating people every single day. I'm aware of the pressures and struggles that medicine involves. But I believe I'm capable of dealing with these. And, and I, I got, got in. in. The first time. The second time. To my top choice. To my last choice. I was, I was studying, studying to become, become a doctor. doctor. First year. I joined 17 societies. I made friends. I learned to cook. Well, learned to use the microwave. I was happy if I got out of bed in the morning. I'm supposed to be enjoying myself. Uni's meant to be the best years of my life. But I don't even have the energy to get out of bed. And the thought of being in lectures with all those people just makes me feel sick. I should get up. Should at least move. I can't. Lazy. Attention seeking. It's like I don't even want to move. But what do I want? Sympathy? From who? I'll have no friends soon if I keep cancelling plans. It's a miracle I'm still passing my exams. I can't even imagine what would happen if the medical school knew. struggling a lot at uni recently. I just... I'm feeling really low and I'm not leaving the house. It sounds really silly but I Can just... Can I stop you there? You're a medical student, right? Um, yeah. Well, it does sound like depression. Does your medical school know? It's likely the GMC will be involved and you'll never be a doctor. You should probably leave now. Quit medicine before your fitness to practice becomes questioned. Does your medical school know? You'll never be a doctor. You should leave now. Does your medical school You'll know? You'll never be a doctor. You leave now. Does your medical now. school know? You'll never be a Does doctor. Does your medical school know? No. Doctors find out feelings on their own! Second year. I ran the societies. I used the library. I didn't go out as much. I saw my friends less often. Last night it was too much. Few too many. Are you all right? Oh. Did you have fun last night? We were a bit worried about you. We put you to bed and you kind of just passed out. That's not water! Um, let me get you a glass. I'm fine. Should we say something? He hardly goes out but then gets so drunk when he does. Numb. Surely it's not healthy. Better than feeling. I haven't seen him eat a proper meal in weeks. There's no point. I'm not hungry. Third year. I was learning on the wards. I did nothing but medicine. I lost contact with my non-medic friends. I stayed in bed most days.
It's so nice catching up with you. It's been way too long. So what are you up to these days? I've got a new job. Oh, wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. I'm only in the office at the moment, but they're training me up and I've got my chartered accountancy exams coming up really soon. But hopefully, in a few months, I'll have enough money saved for a mortgage deposit on a house. That, that, that's amazing. <laughs> Thanks. What have you been up to? Oh, same old. Just exams and lectures. We're on the wards a lot more this year. How do I explain that this last week alone, I've seen two patients who've been told they've got weeks left to live? Another diagnosed of liver cancer. That I met an old lady with dementia who was scared and confused. A man undergoing a risky surgery. That I took a history from a lady with depression who had tried to kill herself that same day. And that none of these experiences were shocking or new to me. It's a bit of a conversation killer. Yeah, same old, same old. Well, we should catch up properly. Yeah, that sounds nice. Fourth year. Essay on the 14th. Functive on the 15th. Learning takes place on the ward. Exam on the 17th. Oh, one another. Don't forget your essay. Have you had any new abstract yet? Have you revised yet? Don't forget to see some actual patients. Exams on the first. Practice and empathy. It's not all about being nice, you just learn this. Your parents bored, you need to bring them back. You can't learn it all from books. I just had the best week. I managed to put in my first cannula and the doctor said that I'd been such great help. Nice one, that's brilliant. I'm so glad I got that essay in early. I think I'm depressed. I'm exhausted. Shattered beyond belief. Trying to wake myself when I should be well rested. But most of all, I just feel numb. I'm supposed to be happy and upbeat, but being a guy, I can't tell people how I feel. Maybe it's me. Lazy, unmotivated. I find myself doing none of the things I'm meant to. I want to start, I do. But then I find myself doing none of the things I'm meant to. So lazy, I can't even move. I can't cope. I'm not this perfect superhuman who doesn't need food or sleep or a social life. And yet, I pretend I am because it's professional to be dedicated and everyone else is coping fine! No, it's, it's fine. I shouldn't have said anything. I'm fine. It's... It's just... It really helped me when I was struggling. I didn't realise you were struggling. I'm sorry. It's fine. I... I didn't tell anyone. I just realised that I couldn't carry on the way I was. Look, you might not feel like you need help or want to talk or take medicine. But honestly, it's worth trying. I don't think it would work. Fifth year. I didn't go and see the GP. We never talk about our mental health. I still thought I was the only one struggling. We graduated. Katie is a foundation year two doctor. Every night, at the end of her shift, she gets in the car to drive home. She never wears a seatbelt in the hope that if she crashes, she will not survive. Martin was in her year at medical school. He came first in all his exams. Last week, he committed suicide by leaping off a building. Rachel has been a doctor for three years now. Friends would describe her as outgoing, bubbly, happy-go-lucky. Each night, she goes home and cries until she can't breathe. Sadie has started her specialty training and has recently been able to take some time off. She hasn't got out of bed in four whole days and her last meal was an entire bottle of vodka. 
Let's talk about mental health. One in four of the general population suffers from a mental health illness at some point in their lifetime, including medical students, including doctors. In the end, it's up to us. Medicine is difficult and stressful and hard, but we do it. Because we love it. Because we couldn't imagine doing anything else. Because it's interesting. Because we might as well finish the degree. We've painted a rather bleak picture of life as a medical student, highlighted some issues that some of you may face now or in the future. We're in the best position to help one another, so let's try and build the most supportive community that we can. Invite a friend round for a cup of tea. Say hi to someone in the library. Send a quick text to someone you haven't heard from in a while. But most importantly, we invite you to simply talk. Tell someone, anyone, if you're struggling. So we don't become Katie. Or Martin. Or Rachel. Or Sadie. We shouldn't have to ask for permission to be human.